I had no idea that you could actually play games with ChatGPT like Tic-Tac-Toe and 20 Questions. I mostly use it to help me write emails for work, but amongst those games is Mad Libs, one of my favorite childhood games growing up. Today, I'm going to be playing Mad Libs with ChatGPT, both as the promptee and the prompter. I'm really excited for this. I hope you're excited. Let's get started. Just a quick note before we jump in, in order to spare you guys from having to watch me slowly type these prompts into ChatGPT, I'm only going to have the Mad Libs screen up, but I promise no cheating involved. These words are all coming from ChatGPT. All right, let's get started. Let's start with this. Commercial for face cream sounds fun. All right, so now I'm gonna speed run, feed all of this into ChatGPT, plural noun. You're gonna watch me misspell words a lot. I'm a really bad diaper. No. Try it. Starting. Words. Bring it. Fireworks. Oh, yeah. 42. Okay, deep thought. 42. All right, let's read this out loud. Also, just to prove that these words came from ChatGPT, you can see that I pulled directly from here, so... Just need to make that clear. All right. Commercial for face cream. And now, ladies and elephants, an important commercial message from our cupcake, the manufacturer of new improved All Goo, the face cream for women. All Goo now contains a new sizzling ingredient called hexamone, which is made from distilled rainbow juice. If you rub All Goo on your dragon every evening, your complexion will look as sparkling as a daisy. The famous Hollywood star Jennifer Lawrence says, I use all goo every day and my complexion is always radiant. And my, I think this is supposed to say fireworks. <laughs> I told you, I'm a really bad diaper. And my fireworks always have a youthful glow. Yes, all glue is the bubbly cream of the stars. Remember, if you want a softer, smoother carousel, get all goo in the handy 42 pound size at your friendly neighborhood pineapple store. Nice. Okay. I feel like we're off to a good start. That was pretty tame. Not too crazy. But I kind of want to switch it up a little bit. Like maybe make the theme of the prompts a little bit more spicy. I don't know. Let's see what we can do. I'm going to go back to ChatGPT and say, let's, let's play again. But make your words more edgy. Why don't we say, let's play again, but make your words more funny. We'll just use funny. Okay. So why don't we use a different story for round two? Let's see what else they have. Amusement parks, bullfighting. Um... What to do when we have a cold? Let's try that. All right. Noun. Banana peel. They may have taken funny a little too literally. Let's see. Squishy marshmallow. I noticed that, especially when it comes to nouns, chat GPT really likes food and animals. So I hope we don't get too many of those. Animals. I'm telling you, maybe funny was not the right word to use. I think, yeah, ChatGPT took took it a little too literally, which is, it's fine. I think this is, this will st still come out pretty funny. Yeah, All right. I'm curious what it's going to come up for this. Oh. That's pretty good. I'm impressed. It really likes the word bubbly. I noticed that too. That's one that gets used a lot. All right. I'm excited for this one. 
What to do when you have a cold. You can always tell when you're getting a cold because your banana peel will feel stuffy and you will have a squishy marshmallow ache. The first thing to do is to take a couple of giggling monkeys, then get into your rubber chicken and rest, and drink plenty of giggle juice. Sometimes it's fun being sick. Food is brought to you on a penguin so you can eat and watch TV, and your temperature is taken by putting a hula hoop in your disco ball. If your temperature goes over 99 degrees, a doctor should be called. True. He will thump you on the pickle and say, zoinks! Then he will ask you what pancake you ate the night before and x-ray your stomach. Finally, he will give you bubbly advice on how to get well. If you do just what he says, you'll feel spiffy in no time at all. (laughs) I still want it to be a little bit crazier. I think what I'm going to do is instead of funny, I'll say make your answers more unhinged. Let's see if that does anything. Because these aren't bad, but I think we can get better. Let's let's see. <laughs> I just want to show you what how ChatGPT responded. Let's get wild. Okay, ChatGPT, if you say so. Let's choose a different prompt. I also wonder if it's just the the stories in this deck that maybe isn't that good. I mean, no, it's Mad Libs. Let's try (laughs) History of a Famous... Actually, no, The Amazing Randy. I'm really curious what that's going to be. Okay, let's go. (laughs) My camera stopped recording for a couple of words, so we skipped maybe like two or three prompts, but just going to keep going. I hope you guys are having fun. I'm I'm really enjoying this. You can tell I'm getting mad because I don't want any more animals. I think ChatGPT's definition of let's get wild is just adding an interesting adjective before a regular noun. Not very wild, if you ask me. Is that an adjective? That feels more like a verb. Whatever. Yay! All right. Let's hope that this one's good. I, I, I need something, like, really crazy. The Amazing Randy. Recently on TV, I saw an amazing magician and escape artist. Both of his glowing puffer fish were laced up in a straight jacket, and he was suspended by a Sasquatch 60 feet in the air over a busy gummy bear. And he escaped. A man, he could, a man who can do that must be a real funky pineapple. I saw a magician once who put a dancing flamingo in a unicycle and then waved his magic jellyfish and made it disappear. I saw another squishy magician who sawed a beautiful galactic donut in half right on the stage. If you practice hard, there are several zany magic tricks you can learn to do. For instance, you can learn how to take a glass of giggly syrup and turn it into tickle tonic. Or you can wave a bouncing wand in the air and make it turn into a red whoopee cushion. All you have to do is memorize the secret magic word, kerfuffle. I'm not impressed. I am not impressed by this one. I can't tell if it's the prompt or the words that ChatGPT gave or if it's the Mad Libs stories or some combination of all three. I'm going to try to figure out how to give a better prompt to ChatGPT to get better words. But in any case, let's switch off. And this time I will come up with the words that ChatGPT will be using for its story. I'm really curious how this is going to play out. I found that unless you specify certain things in the prompt, ChatGPT will use the words you provide to build the story, which I don't want. I want it to be completely random. So this is the prompt that I'm going to use. Let's see if it works. Okay, cool. Let's do... 
I literally just watched a video on this, so it's fresh in my mind. Um, Earth presidents, um, prosecute, under, um, politically, adjective, do not make, I think I pronounce, all right, another noun, um, Rachel, um, Earth past tense, let's do resurrected, adjective, I will do Selene, another noun, I can do Illuminati, another adjective, let's do delirious, that's how I feel right now, Earth past tense, those are presidents, um, uh, do, I see, let's say it's kind of hard doing this while filming because i'm like be funny and i i just can't come up with anything on the spot but hopefully this all comes together at the end because i feel so much pressure right now i don't know if you see this i am like stressed <laughs> all right let's read this once upon a time, in a chronically depressed kingdom far, far away, there existed a fierce competition for the coveted Stanley Cups. Every year, teams would prosecute each other in epic battles on the ice. One day, a playfully ambitious team discovered a secret tactic to win. They would adorably sneakily swap the hockey pu pucks for oversized meatballs, making them too damn big to handle for their opponents. The results were slimy but hilarious, as players struggled to maneuver the gigantic pucks around the rink. Fans couldn't believe their eyes as the games turned into chaotic scenes resembling a circus more than a hockey match. In a surprising turn of events, the team that everyone thought was roadkill in the competition resurrected their chances with this unconventional strategy. They skated their way to victory, leaving their opponents in shock and disbelief. The Illuminati, who were secretly pulling the strings behind the scenes, were delirious with joy as their plan unfolded perfectly. Holy shitballs, they exclaimed, regrettably realizing they had underestimated the power of absurdity. Meanwhile, the losing teams collectively shitted themselves in embarrassment as they contemplated their defeat. Their dreams shattered into pieces smaller than an ass crack, and thus the legend of the oversized meatball tactic became etched into hockey history, forever remembered with a mixture of awe and hilarity. The end. Okay, I'm reading this, and ChatGPT definitely used the words I provided to build the story, like this part. That feels a little, a little too realistic. And also the fact that this is about a hockey match when I gave ice skating as one of the verbs. Um, let's try again. I changed the prompt slightly and hopefully this will make it a little bit more random, but let's see. Okay. We only have 10 this time. Um, now let's say, uh, rivals. I'm going to use delirious again. Food, um, 3D printed meat, and then object. Right. Once upon a time, in a land far away, there were some rotten pickles who lived in a stinky, rotten old barrel. Right off the bat, I'm like, it used my words to build the story just by the first sentence, but we'll just keep going. Every day they would gather around and entertain themselves by playing the bagpipes, drunkenly tooting out tunes that echoed through the hills. See, it, damn it, I, I guess, whatever, we'll, we'll finish, but I'm annoyed. One day, feeling adventurous, the Pickles decided to journey to the top of Mount Everest. Along the way, they encountered a curious creature, a cyborg silver mealworm with glowing red eyes. Undeterred, the Pickles pressed on, reaching the summit where they found a glowing, pulsating object, the Mind Infinity Stone. Upon touching the stone, the Pickles were overcome with a delirious sense of power and began to imagine all sorts of fantastical scenarios. They dreamed of feasts made of 3D printed meat and flying through the sky on wings of pure energy. But alas, their dreams were short-lived, for the power of the Mind Infinity Stone was too much for their briny brains to handle. 
In a fit of delirium, the pickles dropped the stone, sending it tumbling down the mountain. As they watched it disappear into the abyss below, the pickles realized that true power comes not from external objects, but from within. And so they returned to their stinky old barrel, content in the knowledge that they had each other, their bagpipes, and the endless adventures that had awaited them. The end. All right. It's hard to hate this story. I actually quite like it, but... I don't think I nailed the chat GPT Mad Libs thing, at least not being able to take my proper turn. So I'm feeling a little salty. All right, I'm going to end it there. I had a lot of fun. I hope that you enjoyed it, even though the second half didn't quite work out. I'm going to play around with chat GPT a little bit more to try to figure out if I could get a better prompt. But otherwise, definitely try it out for yourself and let me know what you thought. Thank you so much for watching.